Hello everyone, this is Dino Chris from Prehistoric Facts. This is Prehistoric Facts Special Episode number 162. We're going to be talking about a long neck dinosaur today, and that dinosaur is... Barosaurus. And so this is an artist rendition of what Barosaurus possibly looked like. So some information about Barosaurus. Barosaurus, the name means in Greek, mean heavy lizard or reptile. The length is 82 to 90. 82 to 89 feet, that is 25 to 27 meters. Height is 15 feet, approximately 4.5 meters. Weight is 13 to 22 tons, so 26,000 to 44,000 pounds. It lived 152 to 150 million years ago in the late Jurassic period, and was and fossils are found in North America, and the person who described uh, Barosaurus in a paper was O.C. Marsh in 1890. So the picture on the left, on the top left corner, is the map of North America. Barosaurus fossils are mostly found in Utah and in South Dakota. So there possibly could be some specimens found in Wyoming and Colorado. We don't know that for sure, but there's a possibility that there's some that could be found there. In the middle picture on the top right here, this is the most famous Barosaurus uh, specimen that is actually displayed. And this is in the American Museum of Natural History, and it's going up against an Allosaurus. Here's a size chart of Barosaurus. It's a very nice uh, artist rendition right there. And here's the holotype uh, dr uh, skeleton drawing right here. This is the holotype. So there's some back vertebrae. There's some and they found complete limbs, complete hips, uh, nearly complete neck, but a uh, few tail vertebrae, but no skull and no ribs. So they actually had to use other type. They had to use bones from, like, say, a Diplodocus uh, to actually fill in those gaps. So more information about Barosaurus, it belongs to the Sauropoda, so it's a sauropod, one of the famous groups of dinosaurs, and it's part of the Diplodocidae uh, family, so it belongs to the same uh, family group as like uh, Diplodocus, uh, Apatosaurus, and a few others. And, and the characteristics of a Diplodocidae is a long neck and also a very long tail. So these are animals that are actually going to have probably the nearly similar length of neck and tail. So those are actually going to be those types of sauropods. They also have pencil-like teeth, so very peg-like teeth that are designed to strip uh, the leaves from whatever they're actually going to be eating. And of course, it's a herbivore. And so all the herbivore, and so pretty much the Barosaurus's diet is mainly like ferns, bits of cycad and some of those softer vegetation that it needs to eat. Occasionally it would probably eat something from a tree, but it would probably more likely just eat like the ferns and parts of the cycad. The environment in Barosaurus lived in it would have been warm and humid. There were wet and dry seasons, of course. Uh, there would be a lot of trees, ferns, cycads. Of course, no grass or any flowers uh, for that matter. Flowers didn't start showing up uh, predominantly in the fossil record until the Cretaceous period, but there's some evidence that some of the flower's descendants or some of the flower's ancestors were actually uh, found in uh, the Jurassic period. So the ancestors of flowers were probably in the Jurassic period. And of course, there were lakes, rivers, and ponds. That's where you're going to find the, the bodies of water that you're going to find in that kind of particular environment. And of course, uh, some other types of animals like insects, amphibians, reptiles, mammals, pterosaurs. Some birds were around, but they were very rare. And of course, other dinosaurs. Now, Barosaurus would definitely have some predators. And the predators that it would probably most likely encounter is like Allosaurus. Allosaurus would be a very common predator uh, for Barosaurus. Uh, Torvosaurus, excuse me for the, uh, the spelling right here, there's a U missing in between the A and the R right there, I apologize for that, but Torvosaurus is one of those uh, predators that Barosaurus would, base, would face, and also Sorphagonax, Sorphagonax would actually be a, a, a very powerful predator for Barosaurus to face, but mostly the defense, the defenses for Barosaurus is mainly its size, its size is going to be its number one defense, and its secondary defense would actually be the tail. It has a whip-like tail, and it would probably use its weight if it had to use its weight. So it could possibly stomp on the predator if it had to. But yeah, these all three of these predators would actually be uh, around during the time of Barosaurus. 
course, the extinction of Barosaurus was mostly due to climate change. And in the late, at the end of the Jurassic period, the continents still continued to separate. So Europe and North America, the Eurasia and North America were continually to keep spreading apart Gondwana land. So this is like South America, Africa, India, uh, Australia and Antarctica were still kind of connected. They were not totally broken up totally yet. So th those in, that, in Gondwana land did not actually totally break up until around the mid-Cretaceous period. And so that's where you actually are gonna see the continents continue to spread apart. And also the plants changed around that particular kind of time, around the late Jurassic. So a lot of those uh, plants that Barosaurus actually thrived on probably were not, were probably not very good for the for Barosaurus, but other sauropods were able to adapt to those kinds of changes, but not Barosaurus. And then you actually have the map of the late Jurassic period and 152 million years ago. So this is North America right here, and so you can see uh, how Eurasia and uh, Laurasia right here is. So this is Eurasia, so Europe and Asia, and then. And then here in North America are kind of split, split, split it apart right there. And so, yeah, Barosaurus would just be living in the middle of the of North America. And that's a pretty nice spot for Barosaurus to live in and other sauropods for that matter. The next episode will be on December 10th, 2020, and there'll be a Q&A episode. So if you got any questions about dinosaurs or any other prehistoric life, feel free to email me at dinochris71 at gmail.com, or just go on my Facebook page, Prehistoric Facts of Dino Chris. Like the page, you actually post your questions in the comment section. Please do not use Messenger. Messenger is only for private conversations only. So make sure you just put your questions in the comment section. And also for you YouTubers out there, feel free to like the videos, subscribe to the channel, and also stomp on that bell so that we, you can get weekly notifications of every, every video that comes out. And also feel free to put your questions in the comment section. And you, and when you do put your questions in the comment section, you get a shout out in, in the video. And uh, who does not want to be, sh who does not want a shout out uh, from me uh, to know that your question has been read. And so feel free to do, feel free to put your questions in the comment section. And also remember, keep your questions short to the point. You can follow me on Instagram at dino.chris. PF and I will be doing a live chat on December 5th, 2020 at 4 p.m. Central Time. So if you want to join in the chat, so feel free to follow me on Instagram and you can join in the chat. And so feel, and you can ask me anything. And so and remember, no politics and uh, let's be respectful in that chat. And also you can follow me on Twitter at CSGRALL. It's my Twitter page. I post pretty cool stuff on there. Also, take care of people around you. And also, for younger people out there, to make sure you listen to your parents, your teachers, and your guardians. It's the best, it's the best motivation you can have for, for good education. It's very important to have a good education. So with a good education, you get a good job in the future. And also, in this kind of time, please wear a mask, social distance, and wash your hands because we want to reduce the spread of the virus. And so that way, uh, we can actually have a much better chance of actually getting through this. And also, feel free to check out Colossal Fossils. Uh, so I'll put the link in the description down below of the website of Colossal Fossils. Feel free to check it out. And, uh, so, and if you want to donate, feel free to do that. And, uh, and I'll put the link of I'll put a, a link of a paper that is more that has been recently done uh, about Barosaurus, and so you guys can check that out too. All right, that's it for now, and I'll see you guys next time.